I have a new game to talk to you about, Captain Honey. What is it about? Well, you're a pirate. Got it? R. And with Captain Honey, what you're doing is going through and uh, mining and you are raising bees. Yes, you're going to raise honeybees. Pretty crazy. There's going to be a bunch of different cool things. And the best thing is we're going to go ahead and show you how to get the founder's badge today because it's going to go off in about two days from now where you can't get it anymore. So if you're watching this video when it first came out, Good job. We're going to go ahead and show you how to get that badge. And we're going to talk all about the game. With that said, let's go ahead and hit the computer so I can show you more. Welcome, everybody. My name is Kevin Smack. And as always, I'm not a financial advisor. I'm a gamer. Today, we're going to be talking about Captain Honey. And I definitely want to thank them for sponsoring this video. With that said, you know what's coming. We got a giveaway. Two giveaways, one on Twitter, one on YouTube. We'll be giving out two cards on Twitter and three on YouTube. So comment down below and I will also have the Twitter information on Twitter. Just follow at Kevin Smack and you have a chance to win the Obsidian Axe scene here. They will be giving five of them away. They've not been minted yet. So they will actually be dropping them directly to you if you win. I don't have them. They're going directly from them. So just to make that clear, they will pick the winners and send three from YouTube and two from Twitter. To enter, simply go ahead and comment down below and also go to my Discord in Room Captain. Honey, go ahead and put your YouTube name and your Wax Wallet address. With that said, let's go and take a closer look at Captain Honey to give you an idea of what's going on because there's always different things going on with these games. This game does look like it has set up the proper roadmap for longevity because they will have certain things that change the value of in-game items and we'll explain that more as we get more into the tokenomics later but to give you a good idea is the kind of like the epochs which is basically like the centuries as they change in the game the items you're using will become less efficient so you'll need to make newer items because technology gets better and as technology gets better the older stuff doesn't do as good so with that that makes it so the game can stay stable because some things become more obsolete in the future. So you have to continue to keep evolving and keep going with your own island and you know fight off the locals and send ships out to raid the seas. Let me first go ahead and show you the website. I thought this was a pretty cool website. So if you go to the first page and you just scroll, it'll take you to more information. And the thing is, if you scroll again, it takes you to the next thing. Talks about building the perfect colony, and then it takes you down, managing the economy, how you can do that. There are going to be four materials in this game, which I will go over. Then you'll be able to do sea exploration, and then beekeeping. You'll be able to even breed bees, so you'll be able to continue to make honey, which is basically your food in the game. And then, as I mentioned, the epoch change system, as things evolve over time, the new cards will be worth more and the older cards will lose value. This is to ensure the economy stays good. And then they have a unique reward system. So you kind of think of it like an achievement area that helps you do certain things like unlock tokens early. And here's a quick roadmap. We'll show you here where we're at now. We are here. So first version of smart track contracts is done. Atomic whitelisted, yes. Founder badge free drop, that is being done now, which I'll explain in a moment. And promotion keys are being distributed as well. So this is the key, they are silver, gold, or bronze, and now get you different tiers of whitelists. It's important to say that you are pretty early on this game. There is gonna be a little time before the game comes out, but you can get the Founders badge now and start preparing. So let me show you how to get the Founders badge so you can prepare. Basically to become a founder, all you have to do is do these things here, which is go into the Discord room, get verified with your wallet. There's a tweet you need to retweet and tag three friends. It's also suggested that you should follow them. And then you go in the Founders Room Badge Airdrop channel and put your Twitter name 
and they will verify it and then they will drop the founder's badge to you directly and you are then able to get into whitelists. Now it's not gonna be as high as the keys, but it would be probably like the next level if you think of it that way. So you have the gold key, the silver key, the bronze key, and then the founder's badge. Then that's gonna probably be for all drops. This is an idea of what the interface will look like. On the left-hand side, you have the apiary. This is where you're gonna go ahead and raise your bees. You can see that they are level 26 here, so you can also level up. There's a mine, there's a sawmill, there's a pier. Pier will be to send your boats out. Then you have inventory. Then you have some of the materials on the right-hand side. There are four materials, which are mead, honey, wood, metal, and then a in-game one, which is labor. Labor is basically uh, people that you have that will be able to help out. I guess you, it's similar to like builders. So you can use them and then when they're done with their job, they're available for another task. On the bottom, you have some few things as well. Yeah, now you have your mining hub, which we're in now. You have your craft page, store, uh, change, sound, and home page. And then on the bottom right hand side, that is going to be your energy, which I believe goes hand in hand with honey from my understanding. Here's another picture just to kind of give you another perspective on the building menu. So you can go ahead and build different tools and here they are able to do that. When it comes to building, there's a few different types of buildings and they are residential buildings, port buildings, sawmills, mines, apparees, and there are different levels as well. You have three levels. You have your common, your uncommon, and your rare. Now you can go ahead and also get epic, but those are obtained only through certain packs that they mentioned, and the other ones are craftable, but the epic is not from my understanding. And each one has a different thing. For example, residential building the common allows two units available per labor, and then uncommon five units available labor, and then rare eight units available for labor because you're going to always need to be doing different things because there's a lot going on in this game. If you're looking for a very simple game, this one probably isn't for you because there's going to be a lot of different aspects. And you're going to be continually growing your area because, you know, first you have to go ahead and mine, then you got the sawmills, then you have the bee production, and then you can even breed your bees so you can have more bees. And then you also have the ship, which you could send out at times. There's a lot of different mechanics going on in here. And then you have the mechanics of aging. So as I mentioned, tools and buildings will age over time and they'll be less efficient. They'll never be gone completely, but they do become a lot less efficient. Crafting system we pretty much mentioned already. Again, epic cards cannot be crafted. You can get epic cards with a certain chance only when opening special packs. And anytime you have something in the game, it is in there for 48 hours until you can withdraw it. And this is to prevent fraud. With the bee breeding, there are different ones. There's 15% chance for drone, 15% for queen, and 70% for worker bee. The bees will be in different species. They refer to as families, but I think species would be a little better. And any species area that you're in, that's what has to stay. So if you have a honeybee, you need to breed it with another honeybee. You can't have a honeybee breed with a wasp, for example. That's how it's gonna basically work. And it gives a little more information. I'll leave it on the screen. Basically, when it hatches, the card will take 24 hours to open up, and then your card will be available for you with whatever has joined you. When sending stuff out to the sea, you can explore. And when doing this, you can do a travel expedition or a pirate attack. There are different resources that are needed depending on the ship you have. And also keep in mind that if you're doing a pirate attack, you could lose and you could get attacked. So it's important to know that and be very careful with how you do and plan everything. So this does say you can go ahead and take resources from everyone else, mainly the mead and mead is a special token that is limited to 10 million. And once it is done being created, it's not gonna be created anymore. And the circulation supply should all be out within 96 weeks. 
I know that may sound confusing, but the Mead section, they go over in detail on the white paper. So you can check that out and I'll kind of show it to you at the end real quick too. There's going to be PVE as well. Basically, tribes are going to be aggressive and try to come to your island and take your stuff. And here it says, without your consent, the colony will not be able to achieve the success you want and will fall into despair. Your buildings will be looted and NFT tools will not be able to bring your colony income. So it sounds like whatever's going on in that hour is going to get reset by these guys and taken some of your resources it's still early we'll kind of see as this gets a little more explanation and more things are developed with the game as i mentioned unique rewards and you can get certain ranks every week or month and earn certain achievements of course it's going to be on wax as it is assumed <laughs> great place to have it and they do talk about the tokenomics. I did go over there are four tokens on the game and then one that is untradeable, which is labor force. And that's pretty much the gist of that. You'll be able to mine, you'll be able to craft, and you'll be able to keep going. There's also mead to earn mead. You'll have to stake it, but you can also get it through sea expeditions. Honey is received through the bees and then the wood and mine are self-explanatory. Here they talk about the epoch change system, how things are gonna develop, and you're gonna need to be the best pirate in the game to keep up. Here they go over the mead and how it's staked. I'll put some of this information on the screen. It's very intricate, so if you wanna check it out, please do. I would suggest reading over it twice, because <laughs> there is a lot to it. But the basic idea is mead is going to be gained by helping the liquidity pool and when you go ahead and stake liquidity you earn mead now the mead is only able to be unlocked five percent in the beginning and then every week another percentage is unlocked in the beginning the most mead will be given out however you won't be able to withdraw it all because you have to wait some weeks to be able to get it all out this is to keep the economy very stable and they go over it in great detail. It makes a lot of sense when you think about it this way, because then people can't just dump all the token out at one time and crash it. Here's a quick look at the NFTs to give you an idea. You got the buildings, you got tools, you got the honeybees, and you got the boats. And then you got the promos, which are the keys. And this shows how they are, what epoch it is, is in the top right. The resource icon is in the left, card name, and the border explains the resource. That is Captain Honey. Please let me know any questions down below. Don't forget to enter the giveaway. It is important if you want to go ahead and get one of those obsidian axes. And I want to thank you so much for the view.